How's it hanging everybody? So today we're talking once again about the analog pocket. And I haven't said that in a really long time, but it feels good. It feels good to get the pocket back in the conversation, to get it dusted off, because today we have our jailbreak. And it feels in a lot of ways like today is the true release date of the analog pocket. Because for so many of us, this is what we've been waiting for the whole time. Many of us pocket customers and prospective customers, what we've really wanted is a way to just play the ROMs on the pocket. And today we finally have that option. Uh, and we have it with the introduction of Open FPGA. Now it's very important to note, Analog themselves did not bring us this uh, ability to play the ROMs. They simply enabled, uh, or they simply made development possible for the pocket. So it's worth noting that Analog is not responsible for any of the cores that we're going to talk about today that enable this. This is totally community project stuff. Um, and I don't know if any of, I don't know if this individual has any connections with the analog company. I have no idea and I don't really care because uh, I don't think it's very relevant. But uh, basically today is the release of a new analog firmware, analog OS version 1.1. And this firmware came with F Open FPGA, which enabled that development that I mentioned. It also has a couple other features. Let's very quickly just go over these features. You know, I sat down today and I was getting ready to record this video and I was basically just gonna get on here and say, eh, you know, this new analog firmware, it's kind of mid. We don't really have a lot to talk about right now. But then moments later, we got cores. So the fact that we already have cores, like basically, you know, hours after the release of uh, the Pocket firmware is just is just crazy. I don't know who these developer. I don't know who this developer is. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's just mind-boggling to me that uh, that there's that fast of a turnaround. But in any case, let's very quickly talk about this firmware. First of all, I want to note there's a sneaky dock update in here as well. So previously, with older versions of uh, Analog OS. Uh, we would there would be a separate firmware update, like a separate file that we would download to update the dock. But today the dock is uh, bundled, the dock update is bundled into this OS update. So that's cool. We have 13 newly supported controllers, which is really cool. And we have 2.4G wireless connectivity possibilities for controllers. That's really cool too. But let's talk about the main features that we have here. First of all, there's Open FPGA. Of course, we'll get into that. There's also the library feature. And I honestly do not understand why this is here because it seems to only work for physical cartridges. And of course, that's what, that's what the pocket is. It's a physical cartridge player. If you happen to find a way to play games otherwise or through other means, that's cool for you, but it's not really the focus of the analog company. We've talked about that before, of course, uh, but it, I don't really understand why a physical library needs to have a feature like this because you know the idea is you pop in a cartridge and then it tells you the name of the cartridge and it allows you to upload your own artwork or take a screenshot and use that as your artwork and perhaps later there will be more like a description of the game that you look at i mean that's it's nice i guess but i don't i mean i have the game physically like you you think like if you own a physical game you kind of have the info you need about it you know you have the cover art right there on the cartridge so it just seems like unnecessary to me. Now, if the library feature branches out to the Open FPGA section or to even like the Game Boy Studio section or onto flash carts, then that could be a different thing. But right now it seems to only work with physical individual cartridges and I just don't, like I said, I don't really see the, the need for that. But we'll see where it goes. We'll see if it can be made perhaps more useful in the future. Uh, next up, we have the memories feature. Now, we, we kind of had a very early version of this in the previous firmware that allows save states. Basically, you hold the analog button and you press up or down to save or load. And I was always terrified of it because I was always afraid that I was going to like save instead of load 
or load instead of save, and that can just be disastrous, especially if you're playing a really long game. So I just opted to never use that basically, but now we actually have individual save slots and the ability to load saves uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, which is really great. The weird thing is uh, all of your save states go into one big master list. So like I'm seeing game, I'm seeing save states from like cartridges and dot pocket files and flash carts all in one big list, uh, which is kind of weird, but not really a big deal at the end of the day because when you play, you know, when you're when you're using save states with a game, you're probably dedicating a lot of time to that game, and you're not bouncing around to other games where you might need to leverage save states. So, I don't think it's so much of a big deal. But if you're playing lots of different games and using lots of save states, then it could be a little messy, but still workable. I assume that's just the product of this being an early version of that feature, it'll probably be a little more robust and a little cleaner later. But for now, it works just fine. Uh, and it is worth mentioning, if you have flashcards, you can use memories on the flashcards. Unfortunately, you still can't put the pocket to sleep while it's using a flashcard game, but you can uh, save those slots. And that's really cool to have save states for flashcards but we don't really need flashcards anymore. And that leads us into the next topic of conversation, which is the development of these cores. Now, really quickly, I wanna point out this tweet that I caught the other day before the release of this firmware. This is from Bob from Retro RPG. Bob is here on YouTube, he makes content here, and I think a few other places. But he has a really fascinating perspective. Uh, basically, he says, porting your own cores means you're essentially working for analog for free to help boost sales of their device that they are 100% in control of. Remember that Open FPGA is just a name. The pocket is still something 100% controlled and managed by analog. That's a really good point. I hadn't really thought about it that way. And I'm glad he mentioned this because, you know, I don't really get to climb into the head of developers very often. Uh, but I'm glad that I caught this tweet because it's just, it, it's perhaps where a lot of developers are coming out when it comes to the pocket is like, do I really sink time into this? Uh, you know, am I going to have a Patreon account or are people going to actually, you know, compensate me? Um, that's a good question. And, you know, I kind of assume the answer might be yes, because I think a lot of people who have actually picked up the pocket would be willing to drop a few dollars to a developer who is bringing us a core that's going to totally transform the way we use the pocket and give us so much more value out of the product. I for I would certainly be willing to drop a few dollars here and there to developers who are doing this. So that's my recommendation to you uh, is to like you know let's keep this let's let's keep this uh, community uh, relevant to the people who are who are creating for us, I guess is the way I can say that. So uh, next up, let's just jump right into, uh, this tipped me off to the actual cores, to the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Pocket cores, which allow us to play the ROMs. So this is from Analog Pocket Patches. Analog Pocket Patches is a collective that has compiled uh, many uh, dot pocket files or dot pocket patches for Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. And now they're stepping up and giving us uh, a directory of the, the pocket cores that are coming up. So the cores that we have as of now are here. Uh, let's see if I can enlarge that a bit. Yeah, so we got Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. And then, uh, you know, this is something that uh, Analog themselves talked about, a core for Space War, which is like the first video game, I guess. Um, it's interesting. I'm not personally too too uh, interested in that, but uh, you know, analog's going to analog, I guess. That's the kind of things. That's the kind of uh, promotional tactics they uh, use sometimes. But let's jump right into the GitHub page. This is the GitHub page for Spiritualized. This is the 
um, creator who has brought us this core. And I think it's really worth noting that Spiritualize got on GitHub yesterday, which is interesting, right? I mean, I don't know who this person is. You know, I have no idea. Perhaps it's somebody affiliated with Analog, perhaps not. Uh, but it's it's just telling that, you know, the day before the release of this firmware, they joined GitHub and they're already cranking out cores. I mean, it's pretty cool. It's, pre it's pretty awesome, but I just don't know who they are. Whoever you are, sir or ma'am, thank you very much for, uh, for giving us these cores. Uh, and here is the, the GitHub page for the spiritualized GBA core. This will allow you to play uh, Game Boy Advance games. So I haven't even messed, honestly, with the Game Boy Game Boy Color cores yet, um, or core yet, but I will get around to that. As of now, I've just been experimenting with the GBA one. Um, a couple things I will note. With the GBA core, you cannot leverage the um, filters, the screen filters that the Pocket has for Game Boy Advance games. So it's just the regular clean image, the clean filter, and you can't leverage any of the other ones. And that's not a big surprise because this is just utilizing different technology than the main core that's you that's doing that in, in, in the Pocket. So that's pretty cool. Um, it doesn't look bad. I wish that we had the filters, but it's all good. You know, maybe we'll get those eventually, or maybe they'll have to, you know, kind of create their own filters for this core. We'll see how all of that works. I will note that I feel like this core is a little bit quieter than the regular uh, gameplay on the pocket. Like, I can say that, you know, I had like the WarioWare ROM, and I played that, and it was quiet. On this on this core but then I played the cartridge and it was significantly louder so the pocket can actually get really loud but this core in particular just makes it sound a lot quiet quieter in my opinion but it could just be an isolated incident for this one game I don't know if it affects other games just something I noticed I thought I'd mention um, you know that's about all I have to talk about today uh, it is what it is it's a list of ROMs. You can save your ROMs right onto the SD card and you can play them through this core. It works and looks a lot like the normal functionality of the pocket if you're browsing through like the dot pocket files or, or whatever. So, very exciting. We are now officially eating good with the analog pocket. Um, it's, been a, it's been a slow year with development for the pocket. I kind of expected us to already be here by now. But, you know, we're about eight months into the release of the pocket and we finally have this and I am stoked. Um, I will admit that, you know, I, I had a nice, I had a nice good like honeymoon phase with the pocket where I was playing it quite a lot. I was enjoying it. Of course, the dot pocket patch thing helped a lot. Uh, but ultimately, you know, my, my interest sort of started dwindling started messing with the Steam Deck, stuff like that, and then eventually uh, just sort of put the pocket down. Uh, and I would I would pick it up occasionally and, and, and play something, and every time I played it, I'd have fun with it. But really, this is the day I've been waiting for. It's just a way to, to play different games from different systems. Hopefully we'll see, you know, Super Nintendo, Genesis, NES, Master System, all that stuff soon, as well as Turbo Graphics and everything else, right? I mean, it's... The floodgates have effectively opened now, so it's just a matter of waiting how long it's going to be until these developers um, start to give us more cores. And remember, support the developers if you can uh, who, who are doing this stuff. Anyway, that's about all I have to say. It's, uh, it's a fun day. It's a good day. The analog pocket is finally really here. So anyways, guys... Let's have a chat down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about this uh, new update, about these new cores, and I'll talk to you later.